Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Emma and I make college and lifestyle videos. So in today's video, I am covering all things studying, how I study for my college classes. So before I jump into the video and all the techniques, I thought it'd be helpful if I gave a little bit of background on my personal academic experience so you guys sort of know where I'm coming from. So I am a current senior at Boston University. I graduate in January. I am studying media science. This semester, I'm actually working full-time 40 hours a week and course overloading with 20 credits, but I do want to give a disclaimer that everybody has different methods that work for them. So if these methods in this video are totally not your vibe, don't worry, there are so many different ways you can study. These are just the techniques, softwares, apps, etc., that I personally use and work for me. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So I think I'm gonna start by showing you guys certain softwares and apps that I use that help me study. The first app that I love to use is one called Todoist. It's a free software, but they have a premium version and I believe you do get a discount with your .edu email, which I have, and this helps you just sort things further. You can even make shared tasks with your friends. So if you ever have a group project, this is super helpful. I use this to schedule all of my to-dos. So all my homeworks, all my projects and exams and papers and everything like that. What I do is in the beginning of the semester, I go through the syllabus and I just drop everything in the Todoist. One thing to note is sometimes professors will change the syllabus halfway through the semester. So if they do that, make sure you update it or else you'll have some dates wrong. And I always double check because the worst thing ever would be to realize you put it wrong in your Todoist. Um, but this is just a great way to sort of have an at a glance view of when things are due and I really love it. So I'm gonna put some screen recording so you can see what my app looks like. I sort everything by my classes. So I have each little class is a section and then I also have like a personal life section and a work section so I can sort all of my tasks. For note taking, the software that I use is called GoodNotes. I've talked about this a lot on my TikTok and I actually do have a video, a bunch of videos back. It's like a year old about how I use GoodNotes. I have sort of updated my techniques so I can definitely make an updated video if that's something you guys are interested in just let me know but here you can see what my notes look like I love good notes because of all the tools so there's like highlighters and pens you can make shapes there's a lasso tool to move things around so you can organize your notes after class to make sure they look how you want and you can also search words which is amazing so it detects your handwriting so say you're studying and you want to look up something you can literally type the word in the search bar and it will detect your handwriting and bring you right to your notes where it says it so helpful another feature I love about it is that you can make outlines so I like to add each subject for the class as an outline so if we cover a certain topic I'll add that to the outline so when I'm studying if that's on the study guide I can just quickly navigate there review my notes it makes it so easy and you always have your notes on the go they sync to your phone and your laptop I love doing it this way I also just personally find that handwriting my notes is really helpful for me so even though it's on the iPad I use my Apple pencil and I have a paper like screen protector to make it feel like paper I just find that handwriting helps me remember better obviously everyone's different in this way but also it keeps me from surfing the internet in class which honestly is so hard not to do sometimes when you have a laptop so that's why I love using my iPad instead I am also a person who just loves to keep track of how I'm spending my time so I have three apps to suggest for you guys so you can really see which one is your favorite. So the first one is Dailyo. This is basically a journal. So honestly, it's not even really about studying, but I do have a category in it about studying. You can track your mood, the activities that you did. You can make a million categories. I help track my mental health. I track my health. I track my food, my sleep, whether I had vivid dreams, whether I went to bed early. And then you can look at it at a glance and see all the insights, see what days of the week you tend to be more stressed, what days of the week you do certain things, whether certain activities correlate relate to your mood. It's really helpful if you're into stuff like that. And also if you don't like writing but you want to have a journal, this is an amazing way because you can just click buttons and it's super easy. The next app that I really like is called Session. So you can make different little sessions which are little subjects and then you can track how long you've been doing them. You can enter time manually or you can set a timer. This also keeps you from using your phone if you decide to like keep it and track all your time and just study. Um, and you can also see like how long you spend on each class versus another. So if you realize you're spending all your time for one class, maybe you need to divide your time better or maybe that just shows you that that class is more difficult for you. Either way, if you find that it's helpful to see breakdowns like that, I highly recommend it. So far, I really like it. It is called Life Cycle. So it basically just has little 
um, charts and you can see when you're doing certain activities kind of similar to session but has more visual component and it does some of it automatically for you and you can see how your breakdown every day looks in the form of like a circle so you can see it really clearly i think it's really cool like i said i'm just into these kind of apps i like seeing how i spend my time i'm trying to become really good at time management especially since i'm in school and working so much so i highly recommend these three apps i believe session is completely free dailyo is free but you can get upgrades and then life cycle yeah life cycle is a paid app i think don't hold me to that <laughs> another amazing website or software that i love to use is canva.com c-a-n-v-a.com and this is another completely free software they do have premium upgrades where you can use more fonts and design elements but you really don't need it unless you use it all the time I have the upgrade and honestly for me it's been worth it. I believe it's $16 a month, maybe 12, somewhere around there. But I personally love it, I use it all the time. But what Canva is, is the easiest, most user-friendly design software ever. But why does this matter to you? Presentations. If you're ever making a slideshow, if you have one that you make in Canva, everyone is gonna think you have it together because they will come out absolutely stunning. They have amazing templates. It's really easy to move things around. You can add videos and hyperlinks and um, interactive elements really easily, which is also another reason why I love it. But if you're looking for a way to spruce up your projects and really put in the extra effort to impress your professor, I really recommend Canva. It's also amazing if you do any social media stuff, if you're in a communications class, or if you have to make a cool proposal, you can do that on Canva, a brochure, literally any type of visual project, Canva's got you. The last app or website that I literally could not do school without is Quizlet. If you're not familiar, Quizlet makes online flashcard sets that you can study. So you just enter the terms and the definitions and then it automatically allows you to learn them. You can like flip the cards and just like normal flashcards or you can do learning. It will make tests for you so you can practice. You can switch whether you're trying to memorize the term or the definition depending on what type of exam you have. I just find it really helpful to memorize in this way. And also some of the games make it a lot more engaging than just using plain old flashcards. But if you do prefer handwriting, you can always just use traditional flashcards. Quizlet is great. There is a pro feature. I don't have it. I've been thinking about it though. It's a little bit expensive, but it unlocks more smart studying guides. It tells you how to study, what subjects to study based on where you're lacking. So I'm thinking about it, but if you guys have never tried Quizlet, I highly recommend it. And another awesome thing about it is you can actually add your school and class to your Quizlet and you might be able to find sets from previous years or from other students in your classes and you don't even have to make them. Like you can just use the sets that are already created. So that is a really good tip. So now that I've gone over the softwares and apps that I like to use, I thought I would explain how I study on a day-to-day -day basis. You always hear this phrase like, I'm studying, but what does that really mean? So for me, what it means is each day I'll have a certain number of classes. So for example, on Mondays I have a law class and a health campaigns class. After class on Monday, I will go home, I'll relax for a little bit because it's good to take a break between being in class and doing homework. And then I will literally just read over everything I took notes on in class. So much of the time I find that in class I'm focusing on the presentation and the professor and people's questions that I'm not even fully absorbing all the material, I'm just trying to get everything down. So it's really nice to take a moment and just read over everything when you're done. Clarify it in your notes. If you have digital notes like what I do, you can move things around into the order that makes sense for your brain to learn from. I love to do that using the lasso tool in GoodNotes. It usually takes under 20 minutes to just read over notes because you're just reading through everything you wrote down. But those 20 minutes seriously are so helpful because when you go back to study for the test, you've already read over your notes once. It's not like you're just now going back for the first time. Then what I do is check my Todoist, which is that app that I mentioned where I keep track of all my assignments. And I just see what's going to be due the next day. Usually I have some readings, so I will do those readings. And by that, I mean I either write directly in the textbook and take notes just in the margins on what I'm reading, or I will import PDFs into my good notes and then I'll just write on them there, highlight them, add them to my outline so I can reference them later. Pretty much just skim them most of the time. If they're a long reading, your professor almost never expects you to read them in depth. It's just not realistic. They really want you to just get the big ideas out of it. So if you can just 
really thoroughly read those first few paragraphs, get the thesis, read the summarizing paragraph, and then for the rest of it, just sort of skim and highlight what's important. That will be really helpful for you. And then I spend the rest of my night doing any larger assignments and I work in bits and pieces. I will just break down things into small sections, except for essays, which admittedly I always write in one sitting. That's just how my brain works. I don't like to take a break from them. I like to just get it all out. Um, but for projects and things, I will just work on them in little pieces. So if I have something to do on Friday, I'll maybe create the document on Monday, do a little outline, then add some information on Tuesday, Wednesday I'll take a break, and Thursday I fill in the rest and give it a final look over, but I do like to break things down like that. So I now want to go over just how I take notes in general. I know this seems like an obvious thing, but I've noticed that everyone sort of has a different method of it, so I thought I would just explain my personal method. So for each set of notes, I put the main topic at the beginning, and usually this topic is in your syllabus. So my teacher will put, today we're covering um, freedom of speech, and that's sort of like the big topic. So I put that at the top of the page so I can easily add that to my outline. So if the test covers freedom of speech, I can quickly just go to my outline, check out the notes I have under there. Then I will do subheadings with a big highlighter through, and you can see this on my good notes. Um, these are just like the main ideas. So if we're talking about maybe a specific case related to free speech, that will sort of be a subheading. I'll put all the info for that underneath. Then I'll start the next subheading, a new case or a new main part of that topic. Um, and this just helps split it up for your brain. So it's not just one huge block of text. There's like a nice little visual separation between each of those subtopics. And then what I try to do is implement as much different and variation in my notes as possible. So I don't like it to just all be like straight lines of text because then when you look at it, you're just like text and it's sort of hard to read and it's not very interesting. I like to try to use things like lists to mix it up, diagrams, if you're in a class that has diagrams, that can be super helpful to add some sort of like visual component to it. Sometimes I'll also just use little sticky notes, like digital sticky notes, to add little side notes so that there is just something breaking up the big block of text. And as I mentioned, I do have more videos on good notes and I'm happy to do an updated one if you guys are interested. So I thought I'd go over how I use textbooks and how I do readings. So I always buy my textbooks. I never rent them, which can be really annoying from a financial standpoint. I hate doing the actual purchases, but I always get used ones. Usually on Amazon, you can scroll through all the used copies and find really cheap ones. Most of the time, little books I can get for like under $5, like three or $2. Bigger textbooks are obviously more expensive, but another tip you can do is go on your school's Facebook page and see if anyone is selling their textbook that they had purchased. Because so many people buy the textbooks new, which I will never understand, but you can find those people selling them through your school and just purchase the book from them for a discount. But the reason that I like to purchase the textbooks is because it is so nice to be able to write in your textbook. However, if you rent the textbook and you can't write in it, I highly recommend using sticky notes this might seem obvious, but if you just put a sticky note on each page or in each section and write the TLDR, the summary of what you're reading, that will help you so much. And that's pretty much how you can work around not owning the textbook and being able to write directly on it. Those are pretty much all the studying tips, tricks, and ways that I study for you guys today. I hope you all found it helpful. If you did, be sure to let me know in the comments and give the video a like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. If you have any follow-ups on anything in this video and you want more details on it, be sure to let me know and I can always create more in-depth videos. I hope that you guys enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye guys.